okay, then we are back again, right. So, next is, so this phasor diagram is a very simple one, very simple one for this system, right, for this system. So, next is your the stability phenomena. So, stability is a condition of equilibrium between between your opposing forces, right. So, the mechanism by which your interconnected synchronous machines maintain your synchronism just hold on. So, the mechanism by which interconnected synchronous machines maintain synchronism with one another is through restoring forces right, which act whenever there are forces tending to accelerate or decelerate one or more machines with respect to other machines, because all machines are swing, swing in unison right. Therefore, the mechanism by which interconnected synchronous machines maintain synchronism with one another is through restoring forces which act whenever there are your forces tending to accelerate or decelerate, decelerate one or more machines with respect to other machines right. So, let me clear it. Under steady state condition there is equilibrium between the input mechanical torque and the output electrical torque of each machine and the speed remains constant right. Now, if the now if the system is parked up right. Now, if the system is parked up that means some disturbance is there this equilibrium is upset right. This is very common phenomena resulting in acceleration or deceleration of the rotors of the machines according to the laws of motion of your rotating body right. Now, if one generator temporarily runs faster than another right, the angular position of its rotor relative to that of the slower machine will advance right. That means, due to some disturbance or something if it happens that if one generator temporarily runs faster than another right, the angular position of its rotor right is your to that of the slower machine will be advanced right. So, resulting the resulting angular difference transfers part of the load from the slower machine to the faster machine, fast machine right. Just hold on let me clear it. So, what happen actually that your the resulting angular your the resulting angular difference right your transfer part of the load from the slow machine to the fast machine this you should keep it in your mind for general knowledge right and uh, depending on the power angle relationship. This tends to reduce the speed difference and hence the angular separation right, because they have to balance each other as long as they are not losing synchronism right, it has to be balanced right. So, let me clear it. So, the power angle relationship highly is highly or what you call is non-linear this power just hold on this the power angle relationship is highly nonlinear. So, beyond a certain limit an increase in angular separation is accompanied by decrease in the power transfer. This actually increases the angular separation further and leads to instability right. So, power angle relationship is highly nonlinear you know that is a sign function right or for a large system many other nonlinearities are involved. So, beyond a certain limit an increase in angular separation is accompanied by a decrease in power transfer. This increases the angular separation further and leads to instability right. So, for any given situation the stability of the system depends on whether or not the deviations in angular position of the rotors result in sufficient restoring torque right. Otherwise, otherwise system will lose synchronism right. So, you have to see that stability depends on the uh, depends or not uh, or whether or your what you call the stability of the system depends on whether or not the deviations in angular positions of the rotor result in sufficient restoring torque right. So, okay, just hold on I am coming back to the next one just hold on. So, when a synchronous machine loses uh, your uh, synchronism or falls out of step with the rest of the system the rotor runs at a higher or lower speed than the uh, your then that required to generate voltage at system frequency right. So, I mean when a synchronous machine 
a loser synchronism or falls out of step with the rest of the system, its rotor runs at I either higher or lower speed than the required to generate voltage at system frequency, right. So, just hold on the therefore, the slip between rotating your your just hold on just hold on the slip between your rotating stator field that is corresponding to system frequency and the rotor field results in large fluctuation in the machine power output right then current right and voltage this causes the protection system to isolate the unstable machine from the system that means the slip between the your what you call rotating stator field and the rotor uh, field results in large fluctuation in the machine power output current and voltage this causes the protection system to isolate the unstable machine from the rest of the system right otherwise whole system will become unstable so the loss of synchronism can occur between one machine and the rest of the system or between group of machines anything can happen right so in the later case synchronism may be maintained within each group after its separation from the others right suppose one suppose uh, uh, your group one group of machine is somewhere another group of machine is somewhere right if synchronism is lost between these two group then it can be isolated but machines which are in one group they may not lose synchronism that is the meaning now this analogy right so the analogy is the how that regarding the false out of step therefore the synchronous machine operation in operation of your what you call interconnected synchronous machine is in some ways analogous to it is something like this that the synchronous uh, operation in interconnected synchronous machine is in some ways analogous to several cars speeding around a circular track while joined to each other by elastic links or rubber bands right suppose suppose in a circular path all the, suppose so many cars are moving and they are tied with your what you call elastic band or rubber right so that actually what happened the cars represent the synchronous machine rotor say and the rubber bands are analogous to your transmission line right so cars actually represent the synchronous machine rotor and we assume rubber band basically say analogous to transmission line and then so when all the cars run side by side right when all the cars run side by side the rubber bands remain in, in act, intact right because all are actually if actually it is moving like this moving like this this all are suppose this is car this is another car this is another car all are moving and this is your tired by rubber bands i mean so many are there say and this is on car this is another this is another as long as they are moving there is okay it is stable right so now question is that if force applied to one of the cars causes it to speed up temporarily suppose in one car if you suppose this one you speed up like temporarily then what will happen the rubber bands connecting it to the other car will what you call will stretch because if it moves little uh, little bit ahead this rubber band rubber band or elastic band will be will stretch right this tends to slow down the faster car right because as it tends these are moving your this is moving it faster so it will be your what to you call it slow down the faster car and speed up the other cars and similarly other cars will be speed up right therefore a chain reaction result until all the cars runs at the same speed so uh, actually this is an this is an analogous uh, uh, your to this right so the synchronism right so a chain reaction result until all the cars run at the same speed right once again if the pull on one of the rubber bands exceed right then what will happen is stay uh, pull actually pull on one of the rubber band your bands exceed its strength it will break because rubber band or rubber it has some maximum strength and if it is more than that it will break and one here also one repeated twice right so so one or more cars will pull away from the other cars so this is something like your analogous to a machine uh, synchronous machine fall out of step and when all cars uh, moving in a circular path tied by a rubber band or elastic band and moving and one car to speed up how things are right and if little bit speed is increase of one car then naturally the rubber band or uh, this is an analogy or elastic band will stretch up so faster car will slow down the speed and slower car will pick up the your little bit more speed uh, but finally they will come to the 
your what you call, but which will less than the faster car and finally, they will come to the balance, but if the strength of the and this rubber band actually equivalent to transmission line and analogous to and if the strength of the rubber band suddenly exceeds then it will break. So, that means, in that uh, that car will be out of all other uh, all other your cars from this uh, rotation when they are rotating together this is the ana this is the analogy. So, that machine is falling out of state right this is analogous to that this is I have taken from a book right. With, uh, with electric power systems, the change in electrical torque of a synchronous machine following a perturbation can be resolved into two components. Right? These two components we will learn much later, not now. Right? right now, I have written here that delta T is equal to T s del delta delta plus T d delta omega. This is equation 2, but this one we will learn at much later. Right? All these things we will derive, right? synchronizing component, damping component. right? and all these things we will derive at that your uh, at uh, uh, I mean after when the at the end of this uh, synchronous machine part. So, this we will derive, but here I have just written because for the sake of continuity of this topic right. So, where T s delta delta actually this is there this is the component of torque change in phase with rotor angle. What is change in phase with rotor angle part of a, uh, this right. So, that we will see later. Uh, perturbation delta and is uh, your delta delta and is referred to as the synchronizing torque component. So, component of torque change in phase with the rotor angle perturbation delta delta and is referred to as the synchronizing torque. This how it is in phase and this and we will see later we will derive that one right. Similarly, that T d T d delta or your what omega the component T s is the synchronizing torque coefficient we will derive later then T d delta omega the component of torque in phase with speed deviation. Once we are saying that torque is in phase with delta and this one is torque in phase with speed what is that we will see later right delta omega and is referred to as the damping torque component T d is the damping torque coefficient right. So, this equation uh, later we will see uh, detailed derivation of this one at the end of this uh, when it will synchronization model will be developed first after that we will see that. So, system stability depends on the existence of both components of torque right for each of the synchronous machine right. So, lack of sufficient synchronizing torque result in instability through an aperiodic drift in rotor angle. This will later will take an numerical I hope and at that time we will see. So, lack of sufficient synchronizing torque result in instability through an aperiodic drift in rotor angle right. On the other hand lack of sufficient damping torque results in oscillatory instability right. So, it is used to your for it is used uh, it is usual to characterize the rotor angle stability phenomena in terms of the following two categories. One is small signal or small disturbance stability this is A right. So, actually small signal stability is the ability of the power system to maintain synchronism under small disturbances. Such disturbances occur continuously on the system because of small variation in loads and generation, because loads are switched on, switch off, because of that generation also continuously increase or decrease, right. The disturbances are considered sufficiently small for linearization of system equation to be permissible for purpose of analysis. Will for the small signal stability, we will assume the disturbance is very small such that all these equations whatever mathematical things will be derived it can be linearized right and instability that may result can be of two forms one is steady increase in rotor angle due to lack of sufficient synchronizing torque right another is rotor oscillations of increasing amplitude due to lack of sufficient damping torque right. So, the nature of system response to small disturbances depends on a number of factors including the initial operating condition, the transmission system strength and the type of generator excitation controls are used. Uh, so, this is uh, this is on a number of factors actually right to a small disturbance thing that is initial operating condition, the transmission system strength and the type of gen uh, generator excitation control used. Question is that this excitation controls of the synchronous machine if time permits something I will talk about the your excitation system right. So, just hold on.
next is thin crust basin theory and modeling right so in this case your what you call that uh, your just a schematic diagram is drawn schematic diagram is drawn for thin crust basin right plus and dot convention you will be knowing that one is current entering into the plane another dot, another thing is it leaving the plane right so this is uh, this is uh, just uh, just hold on so this is your uh, ans pole is there this is rotor and these are all your what you call this is field winding this is dc because for thin uh, generator field is dc so this is dc this is the rotor and suppose it is rotating in anti clockwise direction this is uh, omega r the angular speed right and this is your scatter this is if this is a this is a dash if this is your b then this is b dash and if this is c this is c dash right so one is i told you one plus or dot that current entering the plane or leaving the plane right and uh, and second thing is and this is your along this we have this is d axis and this is the direct axis and this is your quadrature axis so quadrature axis is leading d axis by 90 degrees right and machine uh, ro rotation uh, rotation of the rotor direction is anti clockwise uh, anti clockwise that is your given here right and here these are all these are all armature winding right armature winding it is marked between scatter and rotor the air gap is there it is uniform so this is air gap is there this is your scatter part right and this is i told you this is the rotor part right this is a schematic and this is your different axis are there axis of phase a phase b and your what you call that phase c right this is axis of phase b right similarly axis of phase a and axis of phase c so just hold on right so uh, uh, all the and all this your what you call a b c that is you know that 120 degree apart right mechanical 120 degree apart so this is a schematic diagram of three phase synchronous machine so armature and field structure uh, whatever schematic diagram it is shown right but uh, that is armature and armature windings usually operate at a voltage that is considerably higher than that of the field and thus they require more space for insulation right they are also subject to high transient current and must have adequate mechanical strength now therefore the normal practice is to have the armature on the stator that's why armature is on the stator the three phase windings of the armature are distributed 120 degree apart in space right so that with uniform rotation of the magnetic field voltage is also displaced by 120 degree right in time in time phase and will be produced in the windings because the armature is subjected to a varying magnetic flux the stator iron is built up of thin lamination to reduce eddy current losses when carrying balanced three phase current the armature will produce a magnetic field in the air gap of synchronous speed that is your this is the air gap this is the air gap here 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 right so that is your uh, Uh, at the synchronous speed the field produced by the direct current in the rotor winding on the other hand revolves with the rotor right uh, actually actually it is actually how they do it this field actually is on the rotor and you need dc supply right and the rotor is rotating suppose if it is a uh, two pole machine and 50 hour that means this synchronous generator is rotating at a 3000 rpm right and this and uh, this uh, your what you call the dc supply actually it uh, it comes from somewhere so this is a question to you that uh, the dc actually field is on the rotor so how actually from where this dc supply come how they do design how they how they uh, how do they design this right because field is on the rotor that means uh, some something must be there for supplying dc which is also rotating with the rotor right so this is a question to you and you just find out how actually it is done otherwise we will answer you uh, in the forum right because the because dc is on the rotor and rotor is rotating at a speed of 3000 rpm for 50 hz system right that means whole mechanism is rotating at such a high speed so what is the mechanism then from where the dc supply comes is a question to you right 
So, field produced by the DC current is the rotor winding on the other hand revolves with the rotor right. So, for production of a steady torque the fields of stator and rotor must rotate at the same speed right. So, the number of field poles is determined by the mechanical speed of the rotor and electric uh, your and electric frequency of the your what you call the stator currents right. Uh, so, the, the synchronous speed is given by this you know the synchronous speed we sometimes use n s also is equal to 120 f by p f that you know right. When n is the speed in r p m and f is the frequency in hertz and p f is the number of field poles right. So, if it is if f is 50 hertz right and p f is 2, so it will be 3000 r p m right. This is actually equation 3 not 1 right I corrected here uh, corrected here this is equation 3 because previously equation 1 and 2 are there right. So, there are two basic rotor uh, your rotor structures used depending on the speed hydraulic turbine particularly for hydro 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 turbine high hydro generator right operate at low speed because they have main number of poles and hence a relatively large number of poles are required to produce the your rated frequency. So, for hydro generator number of poles are high because the generator rotate at a lower speed right uh, maybe 3 maybe 750 rpm or 375 rpm like this right and a, a, a rotor with salient or projecting poles and concentrated windings is your what you call better suited mechanically to these situations. Such rotors often have damper windings or amortizer in the form of copper or bars. This I believe you have studied for your synchronous machine. So, we will not go into detail of that. Our objective will be different the dynamics and stability right. So, so, copper or your brass rod embedded in the pole face. These bars were connected to endings to form short circuited windings similar to those of a squirrel cage induction motor right. So, in this case a rotor with salient or projecting poles and concentrated windings is better suited mechanically to this situation. Such rotors often have damper windings or amortizer in the form of copper or brass rod embedded in the pole face these bars are connected to endings to form short circuited windings similar to these of squirrel cage induction motor as shown in figure 2 a. That means, either here it is placed and they are all I, I either they all are joined together or it is open also this is your continuous damper and here it is non continuous damper because it is cut it is not there right. So, they are your intended to damp out speed of your what we call speed oscillation right the damper windings may also be non continuous being owned only about the pole pieces as shown in figure 2 b only here it is there, but here no, no, no question of continuity only here it is there. If you have studied machine design I believe you have studied this right. The space harmonics of the armature MMF right that is magnetomotive force contribute to surface eddy current losses therefore, your pole faces of salient pole machines are usually laminated is all pole faces will find for salient pole face machine it is your laminated right. So, this is a continuous damper and this is non continuous damper right. Now, steam and gas turbines on the other hand they operate at high speed and they generator your, your what you call have round rotors that is cylindrical type of rotors right made up of solid steel forgings. They have two or four field poles generally two poles in power system we see right formed by distributed windings placed in slots milled in the solid rotor and held in place by steel wedges right. They often do not have special damper winding, but the solid steel rotor actually offers path for the eddy current which are uh, which are effects equivalent to amateur current right. Some manufacturers they provide for additional damping effects and negative sequence current capability by using metal wedges in the field winding slots as damper bars and interconnecting them to form a damper cage right or by providing separate copper rod on the underneath the wedges right. So, figure 3 shows the rotor structure that we will see later. So, for salient pole salient pole uh, machines that uh, generally you are used for this your hydro uh, generators right whereas, the cylindrical type of rotor that is basically you are basically for the your thermal power plant right or your your what you call that uh, your steam turbine or gas turbines, but 
uh, gas turbines are different operating principle than the steam turbines and for salient coal it is basically used for hydro turbine right. So, next we will so now rotor your rotor structures are given right. So, this is your schematic uh, schematic uh, your diagram and this is rotor slot and winding. So, e everything is given here right, but drawing is not uniform because I have drawn it by hand. So, this but no here here no, no, nothing is marked here, but here there is one thing I have marked it here this is actually OH right this is actually OH this is the rotor uh, surface right this is the rotor this is your rotor surface this is your damper winding this is your damper winding this is your field winding and this is the slot wall right this is rotor slot and winding it is a full schematic one and from here this is from this OH rotor surface damper winding field winding and slot right. So, this is solid round rotor construction that is for your uh, for thermal power plant or gas turbines a cylindrical rotor right. Now, eddy current actually this this is a this is a fact. So, eddy current this is the direction of flowing of the eddy current in the your what you call this is the current path for cylindrical rotor this is for eddy current right. And for if you see damper or wedge current damper or wedge current this is your da your damper or wedge shown by this thing then rotor surface eddy current is shown here then slot wall eddy currents are shown there and this is the field current. So, ultimately all these eddy currents you have to design the machine in such a fashion such that things will be minimized those you have studied for electrical your what you call electrical machine courses right. But our objective is something different this is the just preliminary basic thing whatever thing little bit we are giving right. So, this is the current path in a round rotor uh, your what you call in a round rotor for your uh, the, the synchronous generator which is used cylindrical rotor type which is used for thermal power plant or uh, that is steam power plant or gas turbine. So, this is different your what you call your eddy current uh, uh, your what you call how actually eddy current flows which places these are all marked right, but field current at, of course, you have to be there otherwise the uh, machine will never run you need the field current right and field is DC. So, machines with multiple pole pairs. So, machine with more than one pole one pair of field poles one pair means two pole machine if it is four pole machine that I want to be in pair right. We will have scatter winding made up of a corresponding multiple set of coils for purposes of analysis it is convenient to consider only a single pair of poles and recognize that conditions associated with other pole pairs are identical to those for the pair under consideration. Therefore, uh, in our study in our course we will call the already consider the two pole machine that is one pole pair right. Therefore, angles are normally measured in electrical radians or degrees. The angle covered by one pole pair is 2 pi radians or 360 electrical degrees right. The relationship between angle theta in electrical units and the corresponding angle theta in mechanical unit we know that theta electrical is equal to p by 2 theta m. So, p by 2 theta m this we know right. If you have any any doubt about this thing uh, another course I have recorded that is fundamentals, uh, fundamentals of electrical engineering they are for single phase AC circuit the just beginning of that this thing I have also I think I have talked about this right. So, theta electrical is p by, by, two, p by 2 theta m right. So, that means your mechanically if mechanically if you call, uh, suppose it is a two pole machine if you have right. So, if it is p f is equal to 2 then theta e is equal to theta m then mechanically it is theta m and if one rotation complete rotation is 360 degree, but you have four pole n s n s like this although mechanically it will rotate your what you call uh, 360 degree, but in that case electrically it will be just double because at the time p f will be four pole. So, 2 theta m if theta m is 360 then it will be double 2 theta m right 2 into 360. So, next is your m m f wave form. So, this already also you have studied, but I have to uh, you know start this thing. Uh, so, that is why little bit we have taken. In practice the armature windings and round, round rotor machine uh, field windings are distributed in many slots. So, that the resulting MMF and the flux waveforms have nearly simultaneous space distribution right. So, in the case of a salient pole machine which have field windings concentrated at the poles shaping of the pole faces is used to minimize harmonics in the flux produced but in this course we will not study the harmonics right. I assume that you have studied all these things. Our objective is dynamics and control which will come later. 
So, so first let us consider the MMF waveform due to the armature windings only. The MMF produced by current flowing in only one coil in phase A is illustrated in figure 5. I will show that in which the cross section of the stator has been cut open and rolled out in order to develop a view of the MMF wave. Right? So, this is your what you call this coil size and this is distance along periphery in electrical degrees and this is my MMF. Right? And this is MMF wave form due to a single coil. I mean it is something like this that if it is just flowing in phase right in which the cross section of the your stator has been cut open and rolled out in order to develop a view of the MMF wave. So, this is only a only just for one coil that is just is shown that this is the MMF wave. So, if you add one letter we will see if you add one after another one after another. So, it will be like a staircase finally, you have so many. So, shapes look like a sinusoidal wave from right. So, this is MMF wave from due to a your single coil right. With this thank you very much we will be back again.